Deadpool 2 is in theaters now. But is it worth the price of admission? Let's talk about it. What's good, Dropouts? It's your boy Jordan Dropout, and welcome to Review Drop, where I review movies, video games, figures, comic books, TV shows, and all things nerd culture. Now, today I'm talking about Deadpool 2. So if you haven't seen it yet, Get out! because this will be a spoiler review. Now, after the massive success of the first Deadpool back in 2016, Deadpool 2 was a given. Now, as you may or may not already know, we almost didn't get this Deadpool film. The franchise has been in quote unquote development since 2004. Fox had no faith in the franchise whatsoever and would not green light the film. It wasn't until 2014 when test footage of Deadpool was leaked online that Fox decided to give it a shot. The test footage was super well received and fans demanded to see the film. So Fox decides to give Deadpool a shot with a budget of only $66 million. Now, I can do a lot with $66 million, but for a big action superhero blockbuster film, that's not a lot of money at all. And on top of that, two days before the film went into production, Fox decided to slash the budget from $66 million down to $58 million. Now, this caused massive rewrites to the script. A lot had to be cut, and the end in action scene was completely changed. Fox also decided that this film be put out in February, which is considered a death sentence to most films. It's kind of like when you have to take your dog out to the backyard and put it down. Yeah. But to Fox's surprise, this film was a huge success and became one of the highest grossing rated R movies of all time. So shout out to Ryan Reynolds for never giving up. Now on the Deadpool 2. If you saw the first Deadpool, then you know what to expect from this one. And that may or may not be a good thing. The film opens up with a big action set piece, Deadpool being Deadpool, telling jokes, cutting off heads, the, you know, the usual. Some goons ended up finding out where Deadpool lives and they ambush him at his home. He takes most of them out, but he celebrates a little bit too early because he missed one. And that was a fatal mistake because the last goon ended up killing his girlfriend, Vanessa. Which leads me to my first problem with the film. Vanessa's death felt forced and unnecessary. It made the whole subplot of Deadpool even going for her love in the first film feel pointless. But this does set up Deadpool's arc for the film. The first film was all about revenge. This time his arc is more of a redemption story. Deadpool keeps having visions about her and she tells him that kids are the key, they help you be better, etc. So Deadpool saves a kid, Fire Fist or Brussels, whichever you prefer. Turns out to be the same kid that Cable comes back from the future to kill. So you see them bump heads. Turns out Cable is from an apocalyptic future that was caused by Brussels. Brussels killed Cable's wife and child, which was the final straw for Cable forcing him to go back in time to kill Brussels as a child. Now, speaking of the kid, Brussels or Fire Fist, I think his name was Brussels. I might be saying it wrong, but anyway, I'm gonna keep calling him Brussels. He was annoying. I feel like they gave him way too much screen time. His lines were cringy. Every time he would say something, I just got annoyed, man. And he had more screen time than Cable. He and Deadpool probably had close to the same amount of screen time, and I feel like that's a problem. I got nothing against the actor, but I feel like that kid was written in a way that was terrible. All his lines felt forced and cheap and cringy, and I don't know if that's what they were going for. Well, I know that's what they were going for to a certain extent, but it was bad. One line in particular that I can remember him saying was, damn, it feels good to be a gangster but the way he said it was so unseasoned. But his plot is I was tortured by a guy who hates mutants, so I'm gonna kill the guy who hates mutants, which leads him on a path of destruction. So now we have Deadpool trying to reform this kid to make sure he doesn't become some murderer. We got the kid trying to become some murderer and we got Cable coming back to murder him. So it's somewhat of an interesting triangle going on here. And saying that again out loud right now does sound pretty interesting, but it really didn't translate too well to the big screen. Cable was severely underused and his backstory felt super rushed. I feel like if they didn't spend so much time on Fire Fist, Cable could have been developed more as a character because his development in this film was non-existent. But what about the scene when he used his little Back to the Future watch to save Deadpool instead of going back with his wife and child? I know he had a one-way trip back to his time, but he used it to save Deadpool in the end, but that felt forced and out of character as well. Cable was a plot device more than he was a character. 
Josh Brolin is a great actor. I love him as Thanos, but as Cable, nah. I was kind of hoping they would use CGI to buff him up a little bit, make him bigger. But after seeing Juggernaut, I'm glad they didn't. Now on to Domino. Domino, played by the beautiful Zazie Beats, was pretty cool in the film. I like the way they translated her power of luck into the movies, but it made her seem almost indestructible. Looked like she couldn't be hurt, basically. Where in the comics, her power was luck, true, but she wasn't lucky to the point of never getting injured. So say she was in a gunfight. She could get shot, but she'd just get lucky to the point to where the bullet wouldn't hit a vital organ. She'd still be in pain. She just probably wouldn't die. But the cinematography with Domino was dope. I enjoyed her scenes. It was cool to see. Colossus is uh, still Colossus. Negasonic Teenage Warhead is in the film. She is not in the film a lot. And I feel like she should have been in the film a little bit more. I feel like a lot of her screen time was taken up by Brussel. Film would be a whole lot better if you take Brussels Sprout out of it. So Colossus was cool. Domino was cool. Deadpool was, uh, I did not like Cable at all. I feel like Cable was done no justice. All he did was grunt, kick, and punch, and shoot stuff, and his gun wasn't even cool. Now, I can't say that the movie wasn't funny, because I laughed in the film a lot, but a lot of the jokes I didn't laugh at. There was one joke he made about Rob Liefeld. He said something about uh, Domino being straight out of the 80s. I may be quoting a joke wrong, but he said something about Domino being straight out of the 80s, looked like she was created by a guy that can't draw feet. I laughed. I didn't hear anybody else laugh at that line. I don't think anybody else in the theater understood that line, but I thought that was funny. Juggernaut. A lot of people knew Juggernaut would be in this film before we saw it, even though he was meant to be a surprise. Juggernaut felt like he was in the film for literally no reason at all. So we get a fight between Colossus and Juggernaut. And right before that fight starts, Deadpool looks at the camera and says, big CGI fight coming right up. So we get a fight between Colossus and Juggernaut, which was not very impressive. And the way the Juggernaut was defeated was beyond stupid in my opinion, but it is what it is. I guess people laugh, so. The unstoppable Juggernaut did not look very unstoppable in this film. Juggernaut leads me to another problem with the film, the CGI. I know this film had a bigger budget than the first, but the CGI made it look almost as if it was working with the same budget. The ending of the film was predictable. The ending of the film basically undid the events of the film, so it's almost like, did this movie even happen? Is Vanessa even really dead? Did she, or is she back? I'm pretty sure she's back. But the post credit scenes were cool. I won't spoil them in here, but there was some pretty funny and pretty cool post credit scenes. So all in all, I feel like the plot was all over the place. The action scenes were cool for the most part. The characters were okay. I think Cable sucked in the film. Brussels sucked, of course. Deadpool was eh. A lot of the jokes missed for me. A lot of the jokes tended to drag on a little bit too long, especially at the end when Deadpool was dying. And I'm disappointed to say that I think Deadpool 1 was better. In my opinion, this movie was a disappointment. Shit biscuit! Now, I'm sure this review won't deter anybody from seeing the film. I say if you go into this movie just expecting a popcorn flick, then you're good. If you're going into this expecting a good, coherent movie, you will be disappointed. I put this film in the same vein as the Fast and the Furious franchise or maybe even Transformers. The movie was not terrible, but it wasn't good either. So if I was going to give it a grade, I'd have to give it a C-. minus. Not the worst movie ever, but you know you definitely could have did better. But those were my thoughts on Deadpool 2. Let me know what you guys think about the film down below. Did you like it? Do you think it was better than the first film? Or do you think the first film was better? Did you like Brussels as a character? Let me know down in the comments below. But all right, Dropouts, it's been your boy Jordan Dropout. As always, y'all be good, be blessed, later.